Sorry, sorry. I was speaking and I was still on mute. Uh, but yeah, here we are once again. Welcome to another evening. I hope you guys are doing great. And uh, well, tonight we are actually going to be um, learning a lot of vocabulary. That is like the main thing we're going to be um, working with this evening. It will be mainly focus on, uh, focus on vocabulary. The vocabulary that we're going to be learning is mostly based on celebrations. However, I brought more than what we got um, from, from the platform because it is always interesting, you know, to see like new words and new things that we can um, get to discuss. Um, well, apart from that, as per usual, we're going to have the question of the evening. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about your birthdays, you guys. So hopefully you are close or at least a little bit close from celebrating your birthday. And um, yeah, you may have a good time, you know, talking about like the things you normally do for your birthday. Um, so that's like the main thing this evening. Now, apart from that, if you guys happen to have any questions, if there's still anything that you would like to clarify, remember it is always there's always going to be time for that. Um, at the very beginning of the lessons as well. If not, we can jump right into into the question, you know, into talking about, um, well, the, th the different things we do to celebrate our birthdays. Um, I think that this evening we're going to go ahead and start with um, Sori de Cardona. So the question is very simple. What is the most common thing that you do or the thing that you like the most to celebrate your birthday. Sí, o sea, lo que más nos gusta hacer para celebrar nuestro cumpleaños. Good night. Good night. Mm. Quiero ver. My favorite uh, celebration, my birthday, mm -hmm. birthday is diner okay. in restaurant. Eh, Exclusivo, ¿cómo oh, dice? Exclusive or fancy, más bien sería es, fancy. Fancy, exclusive, yes. fancy. Eh, Restaurant. Eat, eating eh, dessert. Oh, really? What do, you like to have, what do you have like to have for dessert? What is like your favorite dessert on your birthday? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Ajá, eh, uh -huh. de chocolate. All right, that's one of my favorites as well, the cheesecake. Uh, okay, very you know, good. Only. Okay, only that. Very well. That sounds like a really nice and fancy um experience, you know. Okay, so when we uh, lo que lo que sí lo que nos confundimos un poquito es que solo es necesario decir verdad el fancy, sí. No necesariamente teníamos que decir ambas. Exclusive sería básicamente la palabra exclusive. Eh, se va a utilizar cuando hablamos de cosas que son como muy, muy reservadas, como por ejemplo, hay restaurantes o hay algunos cocineros a nivel mundial, ¿verdad? Que solamente, eh, pues, ustedes tienen chance de comer en sus restaurantes, solo se hacen una cita con meses y meses de, de antesala. Eh, okay. A eso es a lo que le podríamos llamar exclusive, ¿sí? Pero ya si ustedes okay. hablan de una cena fina, por decir así, En ese caso sí podríamos decir solamente fancy. Sí, a fancy dinner sería ir a cenar, ¿verdad? En un lugar que sea ya un poquito más eh, de caché, como podríamos decir. Ok, teacher. Ok, you're very welcome. Great. Uh, now, let's hear from Alba. Alba Dir Portal. What is your favorite activity to do on your birthday? Thank you for asking me. You're very welcome. Um... I like to spend time with my family um, and go out with my with my friends. Okay. That's Very good. Okay, so yeah, yeah, normally just spending time with the family and probably going out with the friends. Very yes. good. Very, very good. Okay, so um, how about Marvin? Marvin Salazar, what is your favorite thing to do to celebrate your birthday? Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. 
my my favorite celebration in my birthday is uh, go out to to lunch with my family and visit a beautiful place, fun. Yeah. Okay, so go to lunch, go see a beautiful place. That is always good, you know, to get to um to see new places, to get to know new places. And what best day to do that than in your birthday? So <coughs> sorry guys, once again. Um very good, very, very good idea. All right. Um, how about Diego Melendez? What is your favorite activity to do? to celebrate your birthday. Uh, I don't know, I like... Uh, uh, eat a uh, special food this day. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a special food would it be? Uh, a cake. Okay, so having a cake, very good. You know, for me, I remember that when I was little, um, I think it was until I was like 16, um, what we did to celebrate the birthdays in the family was going to Pizza Hut. Like that was the, the thing that we we all did. Like whenever there was a birthday, we knew that some way or another we were going to go to Pizza Hut. Nowadays we do different things, but yeah, back in the day, I remember that was like the special thing um for us to have on the birthday. Okay, what about Jessica? Jessica Rosales, what are the things or the special thing you like to do for your birthday? And me. El jueves es mi birthday, eh, no working, I am relaxing. Okay. Paso consintiéndome yo misma. No sé cómo se dice en inglés. I spoil, <laughs> spoil myself. I spoil myself. Spoil myself, yes. Okay, spoil myself. Sí, muy bien. Eso, eso, es, eso es algo bueno cuando tenemos el cumpleaños. So, yeah, very good. If you're not a teacher, though, because when you're a teacher, you still have to work. Uh, okay, moving on, Imelda, what are the activities or what is the activity you like to do when you have your birthday? Um, first of all, uh, good night, everybody. Um, good night. I really, I just, I prefer a little meeting with my closest family. Uh, maybe share some piece of cake um eat a special food like Chinese food. I love Chinese food. Okay. Uh, or someone something else. Okay, very good. Just one thing, cuando okay. hablamos acerca de reuniones familiares. Um, podríamos utilizar esta palabra. En lugar de meeting, sería la palabra gathering. Sí, gathering, a small gathering. Sí, sería como una reunión familiar. Eh, oh. Porque el meeting es para cosas más formales, ¿verdad? Como para el trabajo. Ah, oh, okay. Ajá, cosas así. Um, para la escuela también. En cambio, gathering es para la familia. Y gather en sí es como recoger, ¿verdad? Entonces, así que estamos hablando de eh, recoger algo de familia para poder celebrar. So yeah, getting okay, a, a family you. gathering. Okay, very nice. Uh, moving on, Sulma. How about you, Sulma? What would be uh, the things or something you would like to do to celebrate your birthday? Good night. Good night. Uh, well, uh, dinner with my family. Meet food. What does say? Carne asada. Oh. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, spending time with the family, doing some uh, roast beef. Some people may also refer to this as a barbecue. Hay personas que a veces, o sea, de una vez le llaman barbacoa, verdad? Eh, 
pero no es como que la forma más, más, más apropiada de referirse a esto, porque cuando hablamos del barbecue, generalmente vamos a referirnos a, o sea, a, en, en sí lo de la salsa, ¿sí? O sea, la, cuando hacemos una barbacoa, en español, o sea, pues nosotros decimos una barbacoa y se refiere a, a hacer carne asada, ¿verdad? O sea, simplemente. Pero cuando hablamos acerca de barbecues en inglés, sí es como cocinar, ¿cierto? Hacer carne, pero que incluye la salsa, ¿verdad? De barbacoa. So, yeah. Um, maybe just doing some, some roast beef or um, you can also say... Um, uh, no, basically that's the best, the best way to refer to that roasting some beef okay um how about olga olga cañas what is an activity you like to do to celebrate your birthday oh hi everybody there. um my my favorite uh, is is uh, seafood and we gathering with my family okay and i like the gift <laughs> And um, and uh, it's just all. It's a it's a, a, a gathering with a lunch and uh, prolongar. Uh huh. Extend. Sería. Extend. Uh, extend. Uh, until the dinner. Oh, very good. Very good. It sounds like a really nice meeting, you know, a really nice gathering. When you get with your family to um, have lunch and you mentioned that you would like to have um, seafood mostly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and stay with them until dinner. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Really nice idea. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Olga, for sharing. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're going to hear from Alejandra. How about you, Alejandra? What is something or an activity you enjoy um, doing for your birthday? Good night. Good night. Well, uh, in this day, my mother cooks me uh, lasagna. <laughs> okay. Because I love it. And, invite, and I invite some friends in my house. Oh, very nice. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like everyone has a different a different celebration, a different practice, which is great. Very, very good. Um, how about you, Francisco? What is something you like to do on your birthday? Good evening. Good evening. Um, my favorite activity that uh, for my birthday is Gather, gather with my family to my cook and pork bread. Or usually, usually go out, go out. We go out a restaurant for lunch mm -hmm. and and the bread in the. How do you say rest of the tarde? Rest of the afternoon. Rest of the afternoon. Okay, so you go to, to lunch and then you spend the rest of the day or the rest of the afternoon just chilling. Yes, uh, usually I'll go out with a campero. Oh, okay, great, great, very, very good. Yeah, el campero is a good place to go celebrate. No sé si en el campero cantan, no cantan el campero, sí. Ah, porque yo sé que en la pizza, en la pizza hat, sí, sí, es ajá, más común, ¿verdad? Que le canten a uno. Yo me acuerdo que yo, yo en un tiempo tuve un, un amigo, cuando estaba en la universidad, él me trabajaba en, en la pizza. Entonces íbamos algo seguido y él siempre por molestar nos mandaba a que nos cantaran. O sea, él también era compañero de nosotros, estaba también en la U. Entonces él trabajaba y estudiaba, ¿verdad? Llegábamos y nos mandaba gente, pero era porque con, de esa forma él nos podía regalar un pedazo de pastel. Entonces era para hacernos el regalo que nos mandaba a la gente. Pero a cada rato que íbamos ahí, él, él nos, nos mandaba gente a que nos cantara y nosotros tipo, dude. Pero sí. 
Okay, very nice. Uh, moving on, we're going to hear from Aristides. How about you, Aristides? What is something you enjoy doing on your birthday? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, um, for me, it's a special party, but uh, I, como se dice, de pronto tengo como varias fiestas, entonces digo, eh, eh, de, no sé cómo se llama, my family in, in the Chalatenango, uh -huh. is a um, uh, uh, lounge for, for my, my birthday in San Salvador, the other lounge, um, uh, in, the, in the work, all the other lounge. Uh, Varios. Okay. Eh, my favorite eh, is eat, eat, eat comer uh, Chinese food, Chinese okay. food, mm -hmm. eh, y, y chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Okay, so my sister yeah. would love that. Very nice. You know, there is a secret, hay un pequeño secreto, ya se he visto varias, varias veces creo que, o sea, que en inglés, verdad, muchas cosas eh, se vienen dando, o sea, con velocidad, ¿sí? Mientras más rápido podemos hablar, mejor puede ser. Um, a veces no es necesario al 100% decir el food cuando hablamos de la comida. O sea, si ustedes dicen eat Chinese, ya se entiende que están hablando de comer uh, comida china, sí, si ustedes dicen eat Italian, por ejemplo, eat Indian entonces ese es un secretito ¿verdad? para cuando quieran aplicarlo um, y suena más native, like o sea, como más nativo, ¿verdad? como más natural de las personas que, que utilizan el inglés como su idioma principal entonces, o sea, pueden decirlo así I like to eat Chinese, me gusta comer uh, chino, I like to eat Indian, I like to eat Um, Italian, I like to eat, I don't know, depending on the on the food that you like, uh, Spanish, for example, if you like food from, from Spain. Um, so yeah, there is that detail. Okay, how about Felix? What is something you like to do? Oh, wait, before Felix, sorry. Um, tell me, Francisco. Yeah, that's what they, they, uh, las costillas el qué específicamente que se cortó tantito ahí Oh, no, en ese caso solo, o sea, podríamos decirlo de forma específica. Yo lo que les decía era, en el caso, o sea, que ustedes quieran mencionar la comida de un país, sí, o sea, si vamos a mencionar como la comida de un país, eh, podemos hacerlo así, ¿verdad? Como más, o sea, para no especificar o no, en sí, de lo, a lo que me refiero es a ahorrarnos la palabra food, sí, o sea, en lugar de decir food, solo decimos Chinese, sí, o sea, y nos ahorramos decir Chinese food, uh, decimos Italian y no decimos Italian food. Entonces, eso era específicamente. Pero bueno, cuando hablamos de que I like to eat pork ribs, voy a decirlo así, ¿verdad? I like pork ribs, ¿sí? Uh, si a ustedes les gustan las baby ribs, once again, you can mention it just like that. I like baby ribs. Eh, entonces, pero en lo que les decía antes, el secretito era solo para ahorrarse de decir food. Ah, ok. Mm -hmm. Ok, you're welcome. Um, ok, Félix, tell me, what is something special that you like to do for your birthday? Okay, we're getting an answer from Felix. How about Hola. Hello. Well, there you are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, tell me, Felix, what is something special um, that you'd like to do for your birthday? Okay, honestly, uh, I I do nothing. Oh, really? For my birthday. Uh, I mean, I have a uh, ten or. 11, I don't know, uh, years, um, how do you say, no celebrar? Since, without celebrating, without celebrating. Wow, so that is a long time without celebrating your birthday. Yes, I know. 
So okay. I done nothing special for my birthday. Maybe, maybe, maybe I eat, uh, I don't know, cake? I don't know. I do nothing. Okay. Well, yeah, that's kind of sad to some extent, but still, you know, sometimes we just don't feel the vibe. Like this year, for example, I don't know if you guys, I think I mentioned it before, but my birthday, for example, is going to be next Thursday. Um, but I don't have, I don't really have plans because I don't want to turn 26. Um, so yeah, but sometimes I think it's because we just don't feel in the mood to celebrate that we don't celebrate, but still, you know, it's just another day most of the time. Like for me, sometimes I just don't like to get hyped up because in the end, I just feel like down when my birthday doesn't go as I planned in the beginning. But, all right, see now from Rodrigo, Rodrigo Melendez. Tell me, what is something special that you like to do for your birthday? Pass time with my family and maybe prepare some, something to eat with the family. All right, very good. And how about Rodrigo Antonio? What is something special that you like to do for your birthday? Okay, seems like we're not going to get an answer. Um, how about Rebecca? Tell me, Rebecca, what is something special that you like to do for your birthday? Hello, hello, Rebecca Pereira. Oh, wait. Ah, se salió. Dijo que no quería. Ok. Um, bueno, Sandra y Rafael, no les voy a preguntar necesariamente porque ya reportaron tener problemas con el internet. No vaya a ser que se nos complique, ¿verdad? Así que... Eh, Ahorita. Se escucha bien entrecortado. Se escucha bien, bien entrecortado. Pero, ajá. Pero si quiere, intentemos. Tell me, uh, what do you, what is something special that you like to do for your birthday, Sandra? Uh, in, my, in my birthday, uh, I have gathering small with my family. And uh, next Saturday, Saturday is my 52 birthday. And we are uh, going to the beach in weekend, on weekend. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a really, really good uh, time with your family. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, how about... Um, let's hear from Rafael. Let's give it a try. How about you, Rafael? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, um, my birthday is always to be simple. Uh, I don't like the parties, um, uh, but I love uh, to stay with my my children and with my my wife. And yeah, I love uh, chocolate cake and also. If somebody give me money, well, it's excellent. Only. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's always good, you know, having some money coming inside. And so very good. Yeah, very good addition at the end. Okay. So yeah, spending time with family is always amazing when you have your birthday. And I noticed that most of you guys have mentioned that. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Now, uh, how about Mayra? Mayra Portillo, what is an activity that you like to do for your birthday? Hello, Mayra. Okay, seems like we're not getting an answer. Okay, so that is it. Those are the activities that you guys like to do. I like the fact that many of you have like different approaches. Now, the regular is, you know, spending time with the family and eating. Sí, eso es como lo más importante, creo, a lo que más nos fijamos cuando cumplimos años en lo que vamos a comer. Um, pero bueno. Eh, excelente, sí, gracias por haber compartido sus apreciaciones o sus puntos de vista. Ahora, vamos a pasar a lo que sería el tema de esta noche. 
we are basically going to be dealing with a lot of vocabulary. So if you guys want to note in that, it's going to be all right. Um, so celebrations vocabulary. We are dealing with celebrations right now. We have been talking about birthday. So let's see. Celebrations. This is like the first, um, the first word. Now, celebrations, of course, refers to basically gatherings or um, activities that people do in order to have like a festivity for a specific reason. Like, for example, if you have uh, graduated, if you have won a championship, if you have even won a game of something, there are going to be celebrations. So a celebration, once again, is basically the same as saying celebración in Spanish. All right, second one is birthday. Now, birthday is the act of turning one year older. And when you do that, when you go around one more year and you land once again on the day you were born and you turn older, that's what we know as a birthday. All right. So the birthday is basically the same as saying cumpleaños in Spanish. The next one is celebrate. Celebrate is the verb that we're going to use when we are talking about celebrations. So celebrate is the act and celebrations is the action itself. So yeah, celebrate is the verb and we're going to understand celebrate as basically celebrar. Um, then we have birthday party. <clears throat> okay, so a party is a festivity or sort of like a gathering that you have with people that come over to a specific place where you have invited them. And when we talk about a birthday party, well, we are talking about the celebration that you carry out in order to um, be with people and celebrate the fact that you have turned one year older. So that is una fiesta de cumpleaños. Um, then we have Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is the night before Christmas. This is something that in our case is highly celebrated for Latin America. It is something that we celebrate a lot with like fireworks, with food, with family gatherings, um, but it's very different in the U.S. So Christmas Eve is basically the same as la noche eh, de Navidad, sí. Noche, la víspera de Navidad. So Christmas Eve. Noche buena. O la noche buena, sí. Exactamente. Ajá, sí, porque a la, a la noche de, del año nuevo que le dicen noche vieja, ¿verdad? Ajá, entonces sí, noche buena. Very good. Um, now, Easter. Easter is a celebration that we have when we get to um, Jesus's... Um, not rebirth, it's like resurrection. See, as you get Easter has two different names depending on the religion that you practice. In this case, Easter is going to be seen or used as Pascua. All right, so it's like the time when Jesus was resurrected. Um, then we have Christmas. Christmas is the day Jesus was born, it is highly celebrated by Christians all over the world, and it is the activity or the celebration that we have on December 25th, which is the day, the whole day when Jesus was born. Now, Christmas is way more celebrated in the U.S. where families gather around 2, 3 p.m. and they have food and they have like um, Christmas songs and they have like Christmas movies and things like that. Um, but yeah, it is like during the day, mostly, they do not celebrate like crazy at night as we do because we wait for um, the clock to turn to 12 o'clock. And that's when we like start like, you know, like hugging and, and like celebrating higher or like cheering and all that. But they don't really do that. In the U.S., they don't celebrate it like that. They celebrate during the day on December 25th. Okay, anniversary. Now, you can have different forms of anniversary. You can talk about the anniversary of like how your um you have um fulfilled one more year working, for example. If you have a job, 
you can have anniversaries at your job, but the most common way in which anniversary is going to be used is when you talk about um, when you and your couple have been together for one more year. So you have been together for like um, a specific amount of years. But every time you get once again to the day you were married, um, you get the chance to celebrate an anniversary. People do celebrate this as well for the day in which they um, got together as a couple. So yeah, it, it can change depending on, on, on how you want to celebrate it with your couple. All right, next one is, well, the wedding, the day in which you start actually getting to celebrate the anniversaries. Wedding is when two people get together and those two people are joined either legally or um, spiritually, all right? So legally or spiritually. Wedding basically means la boda, see? Wedding is the day in which you get married. Um, New Year's Eve. Now, New Year's Eve is basically the night in which we await for the clock to turn to 12 o'clock um, just so we can start a new year, all right? So New Year's Eve is going to be Víspera de Año Nuevo or Noche Vieja, as other people can call it. All right, then we have a carnival. A carnival is a party. Um, normally, carnivals last for a couple of days. A carnival is not something that is only going to last one or two days. They normally last from like four to five or seven days. Um, and uh, they are celebrations based on specific things. Let's say, for example, if you have a um, good harvest, there might be a carnival, a harvesting carnival. If you have like music and things like that, you can have a musical carnival. So carnivals are going to take place um, with the specific topics in mind, uh, but for long periods of time. So that is a carnival. A carnival is básicamente lo mismo, ¿verdad? Decir carnaval. Okay, then we have New Year. New Year is actually the first uh, day of January or January 1st. And that is basically the start of the new year. So that's what you're going to celebrate. Now, for this, um, it is kind of the same. Both Americans and Latinos celebrate it in the same way um, because we all wait for for the day to turn, you know, or for the night to turn into, into or the clock to turn into 12 o'clock so we can um, get to start a new year. Ahora, hay diferentes, eh, diferentes fechas en las cuales se celebra esto alrededor del mundo porque no todos los países lo celebran al mismo tiempo. Por ejemplo, nosotros, o sea, que somos de la, eh, generalmente, ¿verdad?, de la creencia cristiana, pues, eh, lo vamos a hacer el, el 31 de diciembre, pero hay personas, por ejemplo, el, el calendario chino funciona de maneras distintas, así que ellos normalmente tienen su año nuevo por ahí de mayo, marzo, abril, así que, o sea, cada cultura tendrá, ¿verdad?, como alguna su diferencia, tal vez, en el día en el cual van ellos a celebrar su año nuevo. All right, um, christening. Christening is the day in which you basically accept um, the fact that you are a Christian and uh, you start practicing the law of Jesus to some extent. Um, so yeah, christening. <clears throat> okay, so christening is like when you're turned into um, Christian and it's a sort of baptism, but not necessarily. Sí, o sea, no, es similar al bautismo, pero no es necesariamente el bautismo, sino que es como, el, a veces se celebra, ¿verdad? Al menos en la iglesia a la que yo asisto, como la presentación, sí, del bebé. Entonces, eso es el christening, como la presentación a la iglesia de un recién nacido. So that is christening. All right. Then, Good Friday. Okay, Good Friday. Um, a ver, este, si bien es cierto, así se dice, Good Friday, eh, no necesariamente, ¿verdad?, va a ser tan bueno, ¿sí? El Good Friday is the day when, in, when we commemorate Jesus' death. And, uh, well, in our country, it normally has, like, lots of parades or processions. 
And um, yeah, so Good Friday is going to be basically the same as saying um, Viernes Santo, saying Good Friday. All right. Teacher. Sí. Ese, entonces, y bautizo en sí, como lo ocupamos nosotros, ¿cómo sería entonces? Ya, ya vamos a llegar, ya vamos a llegar. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Event. Event is basically just something that is going to happen at a specific date and time. That is an event. An event can be a celebration. It can be a wedding. It can be basically anything. Um, all of the celebrations that we are naming here can turn into events. But it is an event when you set a date and time on it. Um, so event, un evento. Sí, casi cualquier celebración puede ser un evento. Pero el evento, la diferencia que tiene es que o sea, ya tienen ustedes eh, específica la fecha y el, la hora, ¿verdad? La cual se va a celebrar. Así que event and celebration is, is uh, like a similar, is like a synonym, but at the same time there is a difference because celebration is like when you celebrate, but event is when you set like a specific range of time um, for this event to take place. Okay, Lent. Lent is a period of 40 days that we Christians um, provide or take from the calendar uh, before Easter, before the, the Holy Week, before um, Jesus was um, crucified. So yeah, Lent is basically the same as saying Cuaresma. Sí, Lent sería el representante o la representación verdad de la Cuaresma. Next one, graduate. Graduate is when you have achieved the the end of a, of a educational process, and now you can move on and have like the um, new title in your life, and you have reached the end of an educational process. All right, then we have baptism. Y aquí llegamos a, la, a donde estaba la duda, sí, de, de, anterior, de antemano, perdón, o la duda anterior. Baptism. Baptism será la forma en la que vamos a decir, ¿verdad?, el bautismo. So, baptism, or when you're baptized, is when you're actually joined into a church. Um, not into only one of the specific definitions of church, but into a church. So, when you are baptized, you turn or become um, part of the church. All right, then we have a gift. A gift is a sort of item that you're going to bring into a celebration or event, and you're going to give it to the person who is being celebrated. Um, in other places, there are some, some cultures that have it the other way around. Um, gifts are actually given to the people who come to the party, and in exchange, those people give you money back. But that depends on the culture. But normally how it works is that gifts are given to the person who is being celebrated on a specific date and time. Then we have honeymoon. Honeymoon is a period of like vacational time that we give or we take after we get married. Um, this is like a time only for um, the couple to like go and, and, and explore the world or see the world for them by themselves. Um, and, uh, well, I think I, I don't need to explain this too much, but yeah, honeymoon is la luna de miel. See, so it will be like that specific period of time after you get married that you get to spend it only with your couple, or in this case, it will be with your spouse. All right. Then we have retire. Retire happens or it takes place when you get to the end of your work life when you have been working for a specific um, time and you have now the capability of you setting aside your work and start getting that money you have earned in terms of retiring bills or retiring uh, funds. And, well, it is normally also a synonym of like getting to rest aside from your job because you don't have like the obligations of working anymore, but it's still... Um, you can get some money back from the retiring funds you have saved during your, your work life. Uh, so retire is básicamente lo mismo decir, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es el retiro? Halloween. Halloween is a celebration mainly, mainly done in the U.S. Um, it is also being celebrated in other countries and other parts of the world nowadays. But the main focus of Halloween is in the U.S., 
Um, Halloween is a day when people dress up and, uh, well, they get to express themselves and uh, pretend to be somebody else. So that is like the main idea behind Halloween, uh, when you can be someone else. Um, but at the same time, they also try and represent like um, some of the fears or some of the good things that can happen in life. So Halloween, sí, el Día de las Brujas sería la traducción al español, pero en realidad también hoy ya usamos más el hecho de decir Halloween, ¿verdad? Um, bar Mitzvah. This is a Jewish celebration. This is uh, normally held when a boy, not girl, but a boy turns 13. So it is kind of like a quinceañera, but for boys. And uh, the reason why is because for Jewish people, um, you turn into an adult when you are 13. Therefore, that's why they, held, they hold the bar mitzvah. And from that point on, you are considered an adult. As you are already 13 years old, you from that point are going to be an adult. All right, next one up is a parade. A parade is somehow like a, like a, oh wait, like a procession, kind of. But a parade is going to be held to in order to celebrate something. A parade normally has parade cars, ¿sí? que serían las carrozas que nosotros conocemos, pero en inglés se llaman parade cars. Um, and yeah, people in parades, they have like candy, balloons, and many things to carry out the celebrations. Parades normally take place in our country before we, uh, we have the... Um, year festivals or yearly festivals um in sí. each sí ese sería como el festival de la rosa del primer por ejemplo ajá uh -huh. pero en sí, sí o sea parade eh, significa uy es el 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 el, el cor... desfile desfile uh -huh. parade parade es un desfile el desfile de la rosa Ajá. Uh -huh. Decirle a las rosas que pasan el primero de enero. El primero de enero, exactamente. Sí, entonces, pero parade se puede utilizar en cualquier desfile, ¿verdad? Que exista. Así que ahí está la palabrita, parade. Um, bueno, y armar bar mitzvah, de hecho, ese no se traduce. O sea, por eso fue que no dije nada acerca de traducción para el bar mitzvah. Um, ok, next one. A menos que haya algún judío acá, no sé si sabe, ¿verdad? Pero según yo entiendo, no hay traducción para bar mitzvah. Um, Festive. Festive refers to the act of being happy. So when you're festive, it is uh, like an adjective. And we use the adjective festive when we are trying to explain that a person, a situation, a community is happy about something. So festive. Um, it is different from festivity because festivity is the action, once again, similar to when we were using um, before Celebrate and celebration, sí. Festive sería el adjetivo para describir que alguien está eh, sintiéndose feliz, ¿verdad? O que una comunidad está sintiéndose, se ve festiva, o sea, se puede describir de esa forma. En cambio, acá o sea, teníamos que celebrate es el verbo y celebration es la acción, um, o el nombre, más bien dicho. Entonces, lo mismo sería con festivity. Festivity sería el noun y festive es el adjective para poder describir, ¿verdad? Eso, o sea, que es un ambiente festivo. All right, season. Season is a period of time that is definite in English. Um, now, of course, we have seen this word in being used in other things, like, for example, in series or things like that. But when we're talking about celebrations, a season is a period of time during the year in which um, specific characteristics take place. Uh, for that year. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry, but I just don't want to um, to be coughing in front of you. Así que por eso mejor me, me pongo el mute. Pero bueno, um, so yeah, that is a season. A season es una temporada. Sí, es una temporada. También puede ser eh, entendido como una estación. Estación me refiero a las estaciones del año, ¿verdad? So that is a season. All right, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a celebration held on the second last Thursday of November. 
Um, the idea behind Thanksgiving is basically to gather as many of the products that you have been able to harvest or produce, um, just basically to present them, you know, to, to God as a thank you letter. Um, normally, Thanksgiving is celebrated with, with as much uh, as much food as possible. So you bring vegetables, you bring um, all the meat and all the food that you want. And, uh, well, you put it on a table, you gather your family around that table, you have dinner together, basically to thank God for all the blessings and for all the um, good products that you have been able to achieve or to get during um, the year. Now, Thanksgiving is like the opening gate. <sighs> to the Christmas and uh, New Year's celebration. So yeah, Thanksgiving. All right, then we have balloons. Balloons are these latex uh, made um, circles. Yeah, circles that are normally used for celebrations. Balloons can have different colors, different themes. And well, normally what they do is that they help you decorate the places, the rooms, so you can seem a little bit more happy whenever you are going to have a celebration. So that is what balloons stands for. And balloons is in Spanish the same as saying globos. Saying globos, vejigas, chiras, cualquiera de las denominaciones que ustedes quieran o puedan usar. So those are balloons. Next one up, be born. So when you are born or when you are brought to life, that is a very special day, I think, for all of us that are still alive. Um, so yeah, be born. It refers to that specific day when you came out of your mother's womb. All right. So be born significa nacer, ¿verdad? El hecho de haber nacido, that is also a kind of a celebration, not necesariamente, pero más o menos. All right. Now, I would like to know if you guys have any doubts from the celebrations we have mentioned, mentioned thus far, o alguna duda de cómo se pronuncia alguna de las palabras que hemos mencionado hasta ahora. No, teacher. Sí. Um, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. Um, mm -hmm. Ah. Eh, repite, please. No, so ahorita lo voy a mencionar. Okay. Eh, Mardi Gras is something kind of weird. Sí, es una celebración relativamente nueva, pero es bastante extraña en realidad. O sea, porque la, la, para lo que se usa o cuando se celebra el Mardi Gras, eh, básicamente es el evento que inicia, sí, Um, después como de la epifanía no sé si ustedes eh, saben a qué se refiere pero una epifanía es como cuando se tiene una visión de algo um, pero es una celebración que se que toma lugar antes de del miércoles de cenizas o sea es como una semana antes del miércoles de cenizas o como tres días antes del miércoles de cenizas que se celebra como con más fuerza pero Mardi Gras o sea sí es una celebración relativamente nueva no es algo que se haya celebrado por mucho tiempo y es como un estilo de festival que, que nos trae, ¿verdad?, a ese momento en el cual um, básicamente se hace o se, o se da como la idea de lo que iba a pasar con la vida de Jesús. ¿Cómo cuaresma, teacher? ¿Cómo cuaresma? No, la cuaresma, la cuaresma es el Lent, este que les mencioné anteriormente. Lent es cuaresma. El Mardi Gras es antes de la cuaresma. Es como tres días antes de la cuaresma. Y, o sea, es una celebración, a ver, si les soy sincero, es una celebración que incluye un montón de drogas, ¿sí? O sea, por eso les digo que es una celebración bastante nueva, porque la gente básicamente se droga tanto como puede y tienen sus propias imágenes también en la mente, ajá, súper locas, y por eso es como una celebración bien como pagana, pero apegada a fechas cristianas, ¿sí? Ese sería el Mardi Gras. All right, then we have a ribbon. Um, so when we talk about a ribbon, we are talking about that thing that comes on almost every gift that we get. Um, ribbons are also used for girls, yes, but 
um, normally what we refer to as a ribbon is the one that we get when uh, we receive a gift and it is a colorful um, a string of plastic paper that shapes like a ribbon. Si, un ribbon entonces sería una chonga. Una chonga. Sorry, Zulma. Podría ser como el, el listón con el que se hacen las chonguitas. También, sí, también se puede utilizar para referirse al listón, pero ya en el caso, ¿verdad?, de cuando está siendo utilizado en el regalo, pues se va a, a definir ya como una chonga. Ok, and then we have a wreath. Wreath es, de hecho, una palabra que no es tan comúnmente usada, pero sí es importante conocerla. Um, en El Salvador yo me he fijado que usamos este tipo de cosas de forma distinta como lo hacen en Estados Unidos. Sí, porque los wreath en sí, o sí directamente se los voy a decir porque el problema es que sería más complicado explicarlo en inglés, um, son las coronas, o la, las que nosotros llamamos como coronas, pero las que son hechas a base de, 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 de ciprés, me parece que se llama. Entonces nosotros las usamos para los muertos. En Estados Unidos estas coronas las usan para poder decorar la puerta principal de la casa en Navidad. Eh, nosotros, o sea, como les digo, se me he fijado que casi siempre son como las, las, los regalos principales que se hacen cuando alguien fallece, ¿verdad? Las coronas, pero um, ajá, eso es como la, a lo que se refiere, el wreath. Pero el wreath es en sí, o sea, para usarlo en Navidad, como un tipo de, um, de decoración en la puerta principal de, de cada casa. Y pues este por lo general incluye um, también otro tipo de, de, como de um, representaciones. Podría ser, por ejemplo, de moras y cosas así, como más festivo, ¿verdad? En cambio, en nuestro caso, o sea, lo usamos más en el estilo de, um, del luto. Pero eso sería el red, sí, como un estilo de corona de ciprés. All right, and then we have the last couple of them. We have procession. Procession is a really, really simple thing to understand. A procession is a religious um, festivity in which people um, basically have this extended walks that have as an objective to help them um, evaluate their, themselves in a spiritual way and get to understand themselves in a bit better um, on the things they have done well and the things they have not done too well. So yeah, that is a procession, una procesión. Festival. A festival is very similar to a carnival, but carnivals normally include a lot of music and a lot of dancing. Festivals, not necessarily, because there can be festivals that take into account food, and those kinds of festivals are going to be... Um, way 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 different um from from a carnival but a festival is normally a celebration that you have during one single day in which people get to share their um if it's food for example well their their different recipes if it's music their different uh compositions so yeah a festival okay then a present a present is basically the same as a gift. It's something, uh, it can be an object or an item that you give to someone in order to um, to help them celebrate on a specific occasion. So that is a present, sería un regalo. All right, birth certificate. A birth certificate it is basically the, the uh, page that states when, where, and by whom. you were born so that that states the day um and the place at which you were born so yeah that is a birth certificate um sería como la partida de nacimiento birth certificate now there is a difference i don't know if you guys knew this but there's a difference between us and the us in this matter as well because in the united states the birth certificate is like is a one-time thing si sí, o sea el certificado de nacimiento es algo que solo les dan una vez ya el resto van a ser actas de nacimiento, pero el certificado como tal, como la, la partida que nosotros conocemos acá, ¿verdad? 
solamente se da una vez y por lo general las familias tienen que guardar eh, ese certificado y o sea, si ustedes alguna vez llegan a necesitar uh, como prueba de esto, ya no va a ser un documento similar, sino que va a ser ya una cosa más, um, como con menos detalle, ¿verdad? No como acá, que cada vez que ustedes necesitan una partida pueden ir y les dan una y otra y otra. Entonces, en Estados Unidos no es tan común que se vea eso, de obtener varias como copias, digamos, del certificado de, de nacimiento. All right, then we have a costume. So, costume can be seen or can be used uh, mostly for Halloween because a costume is like a kind of like clothing that you wear that is not your regular clothing. So, a costume is uh, like a set of clothing that you wear only to present yourself as something or someone different. That is going to be a costume as un uh, disfraz, see, costume. All right, then we have a okay. greeting card. See, ¿Sí? perdón. Sí, ¿Iba, iban a mencionar? No, solo estaba diciendo que era un disfraz, perdón. Oh, okay. All right, so greeting card. A greeting card is um, basically like a welcoming card that you're going to give to someone or also it can be um, a card that you send to someone in order for you to say hi. So normally a greeting card is like a way to say hi to people that you haven't been in touch for a long time. Sí, estas greeting cards pueden ser enviadas en cualquier momento, en cualquier fecha, y básicamente son solo como postales, ¿verdad?, que se usan para poder saludar a las personas. Antes era mucho más común que se utilizaran, hoy en día ya no es tan común. Mayormente creo que se ven las greeting cards en las personas que tienen fiestas que son con regalo en sobre. Aparte de eso, ya difícilmente se ven las greeting cards o se usan, ¿verdad?, como antes. Okay, then get married. All right, so get married is the act of um, getting to be or uh, turn into as uh, a couple of people to turning into spouses. So when you get married is the time when you ah, perdón. Okay, en español por lo general decimos verdad eh, dar el sí. O sea, es, es básicamente como lo que, lo que se usa para referirse al hecho de, de, de casarse, ¿sí? Alguien que da el sí. En inglés eh, es diferente porque la pregunta que les hacen, o sea, no es así como de um, tú tal y tal y tal, aceptas a esta otra persona como tu compañero y todo eso, sino que en inglés, si recordamos, existe un auxiliar que se usa para ese tipo de preguntas, ¿verdad? De sí o no. Entonces, eh, Inicia la pregunta con do you, ¿sí? Do you, this, this, and that, accept this person um, to take care and, and protect, da, 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 da. Entonces, en inglés, no es el dar el sí, sino que es um, to give the I do, ¿sí? Or to get to I do. Um, así que, o sea, se diría así, ¿verdad? I do. O sea, es un poquito como más aburrido, digamos, que en español, que se, se usa como el dar el sí cuando alguien se casa. Entonces, en inglés sería el I do. All right, so that's getting married, um, el acto de casarse. Okay, fasting. Fasting is an activity that you practice or that we practice when we prevent ourselves from eating anything during the day, from consuming any kind of food during a specific uh, time. So fasting is mostly done as a religious practice, but other people do it just for healthy reasons. So yeah, fasting refers to um, ayunar. Sí, fasting se refiere al ayuno, cuando ustedes no comen nada por un tiempo específico. All right, public holiday. When we talk about public holidays in El Salvador or in the United States, we refer to those holidays or those celebrations that are for everyone. So public holidays can be seen as, for example, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Day, New Year's, and all those are public holidays. Because, for example, when there is like a teacher's day, 
that is not a public holiday. It is a holiday only for teachers. Uh, when you have like, um, I don't know, let's say police officers day, that is only for police officers. But those that are for everyone or that cover basically all of the people in a community, those are the ones we're going to see or, say, or mention as public holidays. Serían celebraciones generales o celebraciones, ¿verdad? Que son para todo, eh, para todo el público. Sí, esos serían los public holidays. Pero bueno, solo quería comentarles eh, las disculpas del caso, ¿verdad? Por lo de estar muteándome cada rato. Pero pues hoy temprano me hice prueba de COVID y salí positivo. Así que eh, por eso es que tengo tos. Pero igual, vamos a estar aquí. Eh, también, si en algún momento, o sea, alguno de estos días, ¿verdad? Llego a tener un, un día en el cual me sienta muy, muy mal. Es probable, o sea, que se llegue a cancelar alguna clase. Voy a hacer lo posible porque eso no se dé. Porque ya estamos retrasados, de hecho, con una clase. Um, así que eso, o sea, solo para que tengan en cuenta el motivo por el cual voy a estar a veces muteándome. Porque no quiero estar tosiendo todo el tiempo al, al micrófono, ¿verdad? Um, pues eso, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope I'll have you tomorrow again. We're going to continue talking a little bit about celebrations porque sí eh, quiero escuchar algunos ejemplos que vengan de ustedes con estas palabras. Hoy básicamente solo era verdad el, el, el mencionar el vocabulario, pero todavía hace falta que lo utilicemos. Así que vamos a estar practicando eso y pues... Falta también una conversación más adelante. So, that's it. All right. So, thank you guys once again very much for your attention, participation in this evening. And I will be seeing you tomorrow again. Have a really good night. Good night, good night teacher. teacher. Good night, teacher. Thanks. Thanks.